नमस्ते अरुण चौधरी लेट्स टेक वन न्यूमेरिकल अ टिपिकल न्यूमेरिकल इन सिचुएशन लैटिट्यूड एंड डेक्लेशन सेम नेम एक्चुअली विद द लैटिट्यूड एंड डेक्लेशन सेम नेम बेसिकली देयर कैन बी थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ न्यूमेरिकल व्हिच कैन बी डन ओनली व्हेन द लैटिट्यूड एंड डेक्लेशन आर सेम नेम वन इज द न्यूमेरिकल इन्वॉल्विंग क्रॉसिंग ऑफ ऑब्जर्वर्स प्राइम वर्टिकल लास्ट टाइम वी डिड दैट न्यूमेरिकल राइट the body would cross the observer's prime vertical if latitude and declination same name d is less than l there is another situation that is a maximum azimuth type problem maximum azimuth type problem so in uh, these uh, questions what happens is declination is more than latitude and what happens is the body does not cross observer's prime vertical typical in this kind of questions is angle x is equal to 90 degrees and in crossing of observer's prime vertical last time you must have seen that angle z is equal to 90 degrees now the third category is latitude plus declination is more than or equal to 90 degrees that means this is a situation of the body becoming circumpolar i will give you a practical example suppose you are in a place where latitude is 30 degrees north which means that in the north direction approximately 30 degrees above your horizon you will find a dim star actually that star is a pole star that pole star shows approximate position of north celestial pole which means that from that position of pole star if you draw a line vertically till the horizon that particular line is your inferior meridian so uh, please Uh, note that if you are a nautical student if you are a mariner you must know that you always can see your inferior meridian if you are in north latitude because it becomes very simple to see north celestial pole there is a polaris so a line drawn vertically from the pole star till the horizon is your inferior meridian and with pole as center and this distance as radius if you draw a circle in the sky every star that fits inside this particular circle is circumpolar for your latitude right so you can see these stars in your latitude will never set they might fade away but they will not set on the horizon you will be seeing them in the morning you will be seeing them in the evening going around the pole they will not set so there are a few things to enjoy from the astronomy from the knowledge of astronomy okay coming to this let us try and do this numerical where latitude and declination are same name and declination is more than latitude let us understand in this what is this maximum azimuth business and how the angle x becomes 90 degrees so the question is observer's latitude is 24 degrees north declination is 44 degrees north find lha at maximum easterly azimuth so it's a simple question latitude 24 degrees north declination 44 degrees north find lha at maximum easterly azimuth so in this numerical we will also try to properly understand what do you mean by lha how do you measure it where do you measure it right here in this question you see that the latitude and declination both are named north and total is not more than 90 This is a situation of maximum azimuth. Let's draw the observer's rational horizon diagram. Draw a circle. Divide it in four parts. West, east, north, south. Latitude twenty-four degrees north. So what I do is I divide it in uh, nine parts. Twenty-four means this is the point, and I draw the equinoctial from here. The pole will come down by the same amount. This is north celestial pole. Declination is forty-four degrees. That means forty-four uh, degrees north of equinoctial. This is the equinoctial point Q. From here, forty-four degrees upwards means it would be body would be passing from here. The amplitude. 49.4 degrees 49.4 degrees would be something like this as it is measured at observer's zenith and the body would be making a circle like this in her apparent daily path and naturally 
this particular body must be star. You would appreciate that this is the rising azimuth. This is the rising azimuth. And as the body advances on her apparent daily path, the azimuth, that is angular separation from the observer celestial meridian increases. And there is a point at which it becomes maximum. If I draw the tangent at this point, the azimuth of the star would be maximum at this point, right? And as the body further advances, the azimuth becomes less than the maximum. And at the meridian passage, you would see that the azimuth would become zero. So we are talking about maximum easterly azimuth in this particular question. Westerly azimuth would occur on this side. We will have to draw an observer's vertical circle tangenting the apparent daily path on the western side to get the uh, maximum westerly azimuth. So this is maximum easterly azimuth. P, Z over here and the X. Angle X is 90. So I was telling you in these questions where uh, declination is more than latitude with the same name, right? Angle X is 90. What is required to find out is the LHA at this time. LHA is the angle measured at celestial pole. If you want to measure the LHA, whether you are in the northern hemisphere or southern hemisphere, to round the pole, we have to start from observer's celestial meridian, but our journey should look at W at the time of start and the journey would stop at the observer's celestial meridian. So this particular angle is LHA. That means if we solve the PZX triangle and get this internal angle, 360 minus this angle will be LHA. By the way, this outer angle is LHA and this inner angle is EHA. Basically, this inner angle is EHA because the PZX triangle is formed on the east side of the observer. Let me draw an Napier circle. Whatever is 90, I write down on top. Neighbors of 90 are PX and ZX. Neighbors of PX are X and P. Neighbors of ZX are X and Z. The remaining is PZ. This is how I make the Napier triangle. We know latitude and declination. If we know the latitude, we know the PZ because PZ is co-latitude. If we know the declination, we know the PX because PX is 90 plus minus declination. And what we want to find out in this PZX triangle is the angle P. So you can see all the three parts of our interest are together. They are not scattered. They are grouped together. So what we get is cos P is equal to tan PX into tan 90 minus PZ. Whenever you see tan 90 minus PZ or tan 90 minus theta, it is equal to 1 upon tan theta. So in the next line we have here cos P is equal to tan PX upon tan PZ. Putting the values, cos P will be equal to tan Px that is 46 degrees divided by tan Pz that is 66 degrees. Shift cos gives me 62.5. Right? So this EHA which we have got is 62.5 degrees. And if the EHA is 62.5 degrees, then the LHA is 360 minus 62.5. So that will be 297.5. So this angle LHA is 297.5 when the body is at maximum easterly azimuth.